What Daniel's saying is like, comment, and subscribe, and share our post. Try to get us some more subscribers. Well, we're kind of at a standstill with the car. Uh, like I said, we're out of pop rivets. This is the this is the last amigo. Uh, it's hard to believe we went through. I think this is the what well, we had them all in, but. This was completely full of pop rivets, and we're completely out again. Uh, but we do have some new VR1 oil that we're going to put back in the car. We need to change oil. It's I usually like to change it every three to four races, and we've I think it's four four nights on it roughly. So. Nothing special about changing oil on this old beater. Uh, yeah, a few of my, it's like a couple of my patch weld jobs on my oil pan, kind of seeping through. Uh, this is just general maintenance. Uh, most guys go two or three races, three, three or four, somewhere in that ballpark when we run them hard. Uh, we're going to have to put oil in the transmission there. Got a spider web underneath there. Yeah. A lot going on in the world today, I can tell you that. Uh, something that kind of sticks in my head when I was in middle school, I grew, lived with my grandparents. And uh, Kid with disability dropped his lunch his lunch trays. He's going to put it away, and I was the only person to stop and help him pick his stuff up and take it to the window for him. Well, my grandma, she's redneck from Arkansas, and she kind of got on to me for it, and something kind of stuck in my head. Didn't quite understand it at the time, but it became a little more self-explanatory as I grew up. Uh, especially, grow, you know, going through the Bible and stuff like that. Is she got on to me and said, asked me? She said, uh, "Would you have picked that tray up if it had been a kid that you know didn't have the disability, or the kid that I helped?" And I said, "Probably not, because they would have they'd been able to do it themselves." And she asked me, so what made that kid any more special? I said, well, because he, you know, was disabled. And that's about all, all I had to say. And she told me, well, how was you helping him? I said, well, he was struggling to pick things up. She told me, she said, unless you're willing to help somebody, you know, that can do something, you probably shouldn't try to help somebody that can't do something. So I've heard it said, and I think this is what one of the things my grandma was kind of getting at whenever she told me about helping that kid and not helping others. And she wasn't very good at putting words together most of the time. And I thought I read it in the Bible somewhere, and I could be mistaken. But I have heard it many times said that, you know, if you, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But you teach a man to fish, and he'll be able to feed himself or eat for life. Or have, I don't remember exactly how it's worded, but something along them lines. And... I really think that's where my grandma was getting at. Wasn't that she was necessarily saying, you know, leave the leave the kid hanging or anything. I think she just honestly felt, or feel, you know, I guess I had to say felt because she's gone now. 
that you probably do more harm by giving people everything than by letting them kind of learn. And like I said, I don't see a problem with helping people, but something I think I missed growing up that she was pointing out was you got to be willing to help everybody, not just certain people. And that's kind of how I feel on a lot of things today. See, we tend to be quick to jump on board and help people who seem like they need it more than the rest. And stay in here. Those that might not necessarily seem like they need help all the time, but step in my beer here. But they leave them hanging when they really, you know, they might not need major help. But it seems like we tend to leave a lot of people hanging that might need a little bit of help, especially in today's world. So, you're changing the oil. Something that's been drilled in my head since I was a kid is when you change an oil and you're changing, especially when you're changing oil filters, you should fill the oil filter up full of oil. Not only helps with dry starts, it also helps get you a quick oil pressure too. Uh, when we first put the car together this year, I screwed up and I forgot to put oil in the oil filter. Needless to say, I thought I was having major issues and it just happened. CJ is out here asking me what was going on and all that and telling myself I'm not getting no oil pressure. And this kid's not a mechanic, never has really spent a lot of time out here in the shop. Then he comes up and says, well dad did you put oil in the oil filter? He remembered one thing when I had the engine up out of the car and upside down about filling the oil filter up and caught me on it. So make sure you fill your oil filter up before you finish up your oil chain. Now, this engine isn't set up like a standard engine, so checking the oil is done a little differently on the way this car is set up. I actually check my oil from the oil pan itself as you can see, there's no dipstick on the engine. So uh, I'll show you here in a minute on how I actually check the oil. So one of the first things I do when I'm checking my oil is find me an old screwdriver. All right, we're up underneath the car. We're gonna try our best to show you. But right there is a hole a bolt goes in it, and what I do is take my screwdriver and stick it down in there and check to see if I'm getting oil on it. I got a plug for it and right there. Uh, I can use that too, but it's just easier for me to just take a screwdriver and dip it, dip it down in there and see where I'm at on oil. So that's really the basics of it, and when oil starts getting up to the top of that, it's full. Something I, I also do with, uh, I like to do periodically, these crankcase filters get dirty. Uh, they're not, you can still see through them on the inside. I don't know if you can really see through there or not, but they get dirty and they just need cleaned off and it's easier to get them while they're still 
lightly dirty versus heavily dirty and I can't start the car right now anyway Daniel's in there taking a little nap I just use you know brake cleaner or carb cleaner uh, or neither one is cheap uh, all I'm doing is getting the oil and dirt off of them so the car can breathe a little better now we'll say if we we're doing long term we would tape something over to these these holes here on the valve cover to keep anything from getting in it. But since we're only going to be have these off for just a few minutes, for a short period, I should say, I won't worry about doing it right at the moment. So it's a pretty simple process. Take fake brake cleaner. That's what I'm using today. Just kind of spray the stuff out of it. Better keep it upright. All I'm doing, doing the way I was is dripping it back in on itself. So pretty simple process. I know I keep dropping it down, but it's about all I'm doing. You can see all the oil and dirt drip, drip out on the bottom. Clean now. Set them over here. Got my old handy dandy metal brake slash shelf. And uh, you know, uh, this one here is a little dirtier. Just spray it until it becomes clean. I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but. When it's coming down, it's coming out dirty. You can see the dirt and everything else in it. This one's got a little bit of rust built up on it. And just like that, uh, Leaking a little more of what it usually does. Usually it don't run, but we'll try to get it stopped before it gets too bad. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. It'll just, that brake cleaner will just dry on the floor. Uh, just like those, they'll dry pretty quick here. As you can see, they're a lot cleaner than what they were when they started. I think this is the second year, third year I've been running those. The old ones, I didn't clean them. One of those learning things. I didn't have much knowledge getting into racing. A lot of mechanical skills I've learned uh, over the years. What well, little bit I knew, I learned off of watching Saturday morning hot rod shows on. Well, it used to be TNN. Now it's I think it's Spike TV now. I don't even think they come on that channel anymore. But that's what I used to watch as a kid, and I learned a little bit doing that. But I've learned a lot from trial and error expensive trial and error and when I get a chance I like to listen to the old timers they'll tell you tricks so it'll save you a lot of money and kind of keep you some headaches but that is spraying these things down with a little bit of cleaner every once in a while make a world difference it lets the heat out of the engine and like I said some guys run catch cans that cycle the oil through but it's just easy to run those. So, what I'm gonna end up doing after I got to think about it last night, I'm gonna take all my panels on this side and pop rivet them together. This one up here on Baker, the vinyl's lining up halfway decent. But back here on my number here, I don't know if you quite see it in the video, but there's a pretty good gap in it. So I'm gonna do my best to try to get it lined back up and looking halfway decent. But my body bolts are all about an inch further forward on this side than what they should be. And I think it's because that front T-bar up there uh, above the radiator, in front of the radiator, I think when I pulled it back, I pulled it back just a little too far. So I'm going to try to pull everything back towards the back of the car and try to get it back where it should be. Um, if not, not a big deal. We just want the vinyls to line up and look halfway decent. We can kind of, I've already modified it back here to make it look 
make it somewhat lined up. But uh, old Matthews and Son equipment, I told him, I said it's a good thing you bought two spots because you know, this side here took a pretty hard hit. Uh, I'm glad I went over to Baker Repair before we took the car out to the track Saturday because his side took a pretty good number and as pretty as it was. Uh, we got Riker trucking. They they fared out pretty good on the hood. A uh, little bit of damage to the hood. High caliber graphics and DSP up there. Riding up here on the nose. They came out good. Honk the Kong. I think he's working on something for us for a fan appreciation night out at Farmington this weekend. Uh, Wagner Brothers Construction. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, uh, I, post, I share a lot of their posts on my Facebook page. Uh, they do they do some crazy work, and it comes out really good. Uh, and like I said, Matthews and Son Equipment. They they do they sell products I stand behind 100%. Uh, like I said, anybody you see on my car is people they all use. DSP Motorsports uh, up there. Um, they've he it's my brother uh, he specializes in mud trucks uh, but he he's helped me at, he's the one that basically got me started in racing to start with so uh, he does a lot of my fabrication so everybody that's on my car is people I do but either do business with or I would do business with and truthfully the only one I haven't done business with is Wagner Brothers Construction but I've seen their work it's good enough for me I would stand behind it matter of fact really think about calling them up see what we can do to replace this old old shack we work out of here maybe get a little better insulated and get rid of some of these waspers and I hate them stupid things but we're going to close it out here, I'm kind of rambling on here. Uh, like I said, January 11th, I believe it is, is Fan Appreciation Night at St. Francis County Raceway. We're going to pull the cars out on the track. I'm going to have mine out there, whether it's raceable or not, one way or the other. Uh, it's for the fans, it's for the drivers, it's for the track guys. Uh, guys be handing out hats and shirts and giveaways and all this stuff we're going to have some pictures and i think oh uh, dave from honky kong is going to try to get some beard products for those of you guys with chin curtains uh it's not only good for the chin i've been sweating but i went to church this morning i put i throw it up in my hair too and comb it up it don't dry like a gel or hairspray or any of that it just kind of th gives it helps hold it in place uh i think he's going to try to get some samples together or something for uh, fan appreciation night. I'm going to double check with Matthews and Son. They might have something for us to give away to. Um, I know like we're going to have some pictures and I think my wife's working on stuff for uh, giveaway to, you know, as from the race team. Uh, hope to see you guys out there. Uh, we're going to run to New Jersey this week. We're, we might shoot something from Summit when we stop in there, but uh, that videos we've already done that before and that videos a few months back if you want to go see it uh, I'll try to share a link in the description uh, I guess we're gonna close it out hopefully Friday we're gonna be mad thrash trying to get this thing ready to go uh, get it drivable we're going to slip up underneath and get the transmission work done I need to run inside and see if the baby's awake so I can put my crankcase filters on and fire this thing up, make sure it's got oil pressure. And I need to make sure it's going to start because I changed the, uh, the module inside the distributor. And I need to make sure it's going to run. Now than that, we're going to close it out. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, share if you if you got Facebook, share it on Facebook, whatever, Snapchat. Uh, you can follow me on TikTok, Fuzzy. I think it's just Fuzzy56. It might be Big Fuzzy, but uh, I, every once in a while I put videos on TikTok. Uh, I don't know what my Snapchat is. I don't really 
do too much. I'm in a couple groups on there, and other than that, I don't do a lot on Snapchat. But uh, we'll catch you guys later. God bless you.